Hey guys, welcome to the Andy Elliott One Percenter Podcast. This is going to be the podcast. If you're in the automotive sales game, it will change your life. It's going to be episode one. Guys, my name's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my man, Gian Gomez. He's one of my right-hand man coaches. And my man, Ryan Brunton, who is one of my right-hand man coaches. Guys, say what's up. What up, what up, what up? What's going on, everybody? Guys, Savage City. Two words, Savage City. It's all we do is cause market disruption. Listen, if you're in the sales game, I don't care if you're a salesperson, manager, GM, closer, w- whatever they call you in your store, or you're just wanting to get into the business, our goal is, is that why we've created this, this podcast is that we have this deadly 21st century training that will change your life forever. But I want to share this with you. You know, I know this in a lot of places that you ha- it takes a while to move up through the ranks to make a lot of money. It doesn't in the car business, okay? Time and experience doesn't equal the most money made in the store. It's all about skill acquisition, and we are going to teach you some tricks, tactics, hacks, right, on how you can basically turn decades into days and not be that guy out there on the rock sitting here and saying, oh, you know, I'll make 100 grand. Look, I'm going to tell you this. You can make 500,000 a year selling cars, but most people know what to do and don't do what they know, or they just don't know what they don't know. So as we're in this podcast today, we're going to kind of run through, and I'd like to start out a little bit with the success that we've had as our company, the Elliott Group, in 2020. And I'm going to go over this real quick. Guys, our goal was obviously to crush and murder every target we ever hit. Starting this year in 2020, I said, I want to train 70,000 salespeople by the end of 2020. Guys, we're going into the last week. We're right here going into Christmas and we're training 115,000 salespeople. That's absolutely incredible. That was almost you know, um, what, almost 50,000 more than we planned, almost double, guys. All I want to say is thank you to every single person out there who's listened to us, who's supported us, who's followed us, who has been doing the training, who's leveled up, and like I said, who's committed, not interested in becoming better, but who is committed, which is how we came up with the term one percenter podcast, because we do what the other 99% don't. So the fact that you're on here listening Guys, I want to tell you, crush it. You're going to love this podcast. It's going to be really special. You're going to learn probably a lot of things about me that you didn't know. And that will probably tell you a lot about, look, what's capable of you. And then obviously where we're going together as a family tribe team. Um, Like I said, we're just, we're savage city. We're going to kill it. So what I'd like to do is first things first, let's just, in case somebody doesn't know who I am real quick, I'm going to sum this up in 30 seconds and let's get on with it. Selling cars at 18, I was dead broke. By 25 years old, I hit my first $500,000 selling cars. Guys, I, my, my record for selling cars in the U.S. is $716,000. That was my highest year to date. And that was selling cars, not being a manager, not being a GM, but selling cars. And then making $2 million as being a GM. And all of these things that I did, look, I was always labeled the least likely not to make it, okay, which I'm going to talk to you about a little bit during this, that people that come from nothing can end up with the most, all right? It's all about the fire in the belly and the drive, not being motivated, but being driven, right? You know, people that want to win. Look, losing's a habit, so is winning. Winning is a habit, but you have to do certain things every day, all the time to create those winning habits. And we're not afraid and we fear nothing, right, to fail. But I used to. And guess what? There's a certain, certain things that happened during my life that allowed me to become and create this man that I have today. And my goal with everybody listening to this podcast right now or on YouTube, wherever you're at, is for you to recreate yourself today. As I say stuff, I would like for you to look at yourself. Look at the holes in your game and decide, hey, you know what? I need to work on this area. And you know what? Don't lie to yourself. Look in the mirror. This is between you and you. Who is going to change your life, your family's life? You. It isn't going to be anybody else. It's going to be you. You have 200% full responsibility and control to change your destiny. And guess what? During this podcast, I'm hoping that many things spark a fire inside of you that makes you start attacking the person that God created you to be. So guys, let's rock and roll real quick, telling you a little bit about who I am. I would like to start a little bit about kind of how I grew up. I think that's important, okay? Andy, tell them about the fee that they pay for watching the podcast. 
Oh, the fee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. So this is absolutely free, okay? It costs nothing. We create this and make this to create the world's most elite salespeople. We say it's created by the elite for the elite, okay? If you know somebody right now after listening to this podcast that needs to hear this, all we ask is that you would share it. That would be the fee. Pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Look, anything that you can do for somebody else, I, I always say that, you know, what you do for somebody, you get back in return. If you feel like that you've got value from this, please share it with somebody else. That right there would be a gift to us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Good call, Gian. I love that. It's all about paying it forward, baby. All right. So with that being said, I would like to talk a little bit about, look, and, and by the way, look, anybody that was raised amazing, I'm, I'm married right now. I have three kids. I've been married for 15 years. I mean, I, I am the luckiest man alive, I feel like. I don't deserve my wife. I mean, obviously, I'm married way up. My kids are beautiful. They're all amazing. Here's the biggest deal is that as I sit there and I look at my wife, I mean, as a kid, I never imagined having this life. So some of you guys, you're out there right now. You were raised by a great family. And the idea of it is if you were raised by a great family, you know, that that's great. But but that wasn't my story. Growing up, my mom left and I was two years old. She was straight up alcoholic. I mean, hardcore. Two years old leaves me, my brothers and sisters. I have five brothers and sisters. She literally rolls out the house and leaves us and we don't see her again until like we were like 30 years old. And I can tell you that story. That was crazy. But long story short... It was a shit show growing up. It was almost like Jerry Springer, okay? By second grade, my dad had a conversation with us and pretty much said, hey, you know what? Since about the second grade, you guys don't have a curfew anymore. Um, don't go to jail. Don't get in trouble. I'm going to be watching your sisters, make sure they don't get pregnant. They're running around crazy. And that was really the deal. We ran around all through life and we didn't have really have any guidance so we learned a little bit of street smarts, but we made bad grades all the way through school. My senior year, I was I had straight D's, May 3rd, 99 tornado, right, in Oklahoma, Tornado Alley, biggest tornado in the world ever comes through, smokes my high school. And if you were passing, you got to walk and graduate. Guys, if I'd have taken that semester test, I would have failed. I would have been held back again. I said again because I got held back in, in kindergarten, <laughs> which I don't know how that happens. But the idea of it is, is I graduate and I'm 18 years old and I don't know what to do. I go work. And, and the reason why I'm telling you about making bad grades and how I didn't have a great future growing up is because I feel like a lot of people out there, they get labeled and people title them, Right based on, you know, like how their life is, you know, the kids that, you know, they have money and their parents have nice cars and they have a beautiful home and they live in a great neighborhood. I, I mean, and, and by the way, all that's great. All that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like those kids are like destined for success. But the kids that don't have that, that are living in the freaking, you know, in the, in, in the, I don't know, the shack, you know what I'm saying? Dude, I had one pair of jeans and two shirts that I rotated every other day at school. I mean, dude, that's embarrassing. But you know what? We, we didn't care. We were just the alternative kids. That was our life. That's what we had, and, and we did it. And look, hey, you know, that wasn't who I wanted to be, but that was, that was what we got. Well, the idea of it is I was labeled inside almost, and I felt like that that was just my life. If I could get a good job, if I could make a good hourly wage, if one day I could get a home or a car, like that would be really cool, right? I was thinking so small because no one was there to stretch me, push me, hold me accountable or anything. Then I started the car business when I was 18, but I had to work a month of construction whenever I graduated so I could learn that I never wanted to do manual labor again for the rest of my life because they worked the crap out of me from 5 a.m. in the morning until midnight and literally I got a taste of what life would have been like if I would have done manual labor. So I go straight into the car business and I'd like to tell you about my first car deal. This is where everything changed for me. And I will tell you this, all right? This was luck on my part, okay? Now, I've, I've, I, now, my next deal didn't go this way, but my first deal, all I had to do was understand that selling cars was my way out. That's all I needed. I didn't know what I was going to do. Look, most of us didn't plan on getting into the car business. We really didn't. How we ended up here, I don't know, but we all have a story how we got here. But the best thing that ever happened to me, and most of us, is the car business, Okay. All that any man or woman could ever ask for is just an opportunity. And we've all been given the most incredible opportunity in the world with the car business. My first deal, I remember this old man pulls up, right? And by the way, 
a manager gives me a job. My older, a good one of my best friends, older brother is a manager at a store. He gives me a job. He, I didn't have a car. He says, "Hey, man, I'm going to pick you up in the morning." I didn't have any clothes either. He let me borrow his clothes. They were three times too too short on my legs. I was like high waters, and he was twice as small as me, so that the clothes barely fit. But I didn't care. I had a job, right? And I remember I said, "Hey, dude, if you'll give me a ride to work and you'll buy me lunch." I'll work from eight in the morning until midnight because I was doing that in my last job. So I said, hey, I'll, I'll do that for you. And especially if I don't have to dig out sheetrock and, you know, I'm saying uh, fiberglass out of houses that were smashed by the tornado. So guess what? I go in, he picks me up in the morning. I open the gates and guess what? I go into work. He says, Andy, I'm going to have a sales meeting. Here's what I need you to do. Go outside. If anybody pulls up, say hi to him. Tell him we're in a meeting. We'll be out in just a second. First of all, I've never had any customer service skills. I don't know how to talk to people. And I'm sitting out there and guess what? Old man pulls up. I walk out, say, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? These guys are in a meeting. Don't know what I'm doing. Just want to say hi to you. I'm basically just going to get somebody to help you in a minute. Guy says, cool, man. Hey, I actually know what I want. I want one of these, you know, Nissans over here, right? Because I was selling Nissans. This is back in 1999. I go and I walk over to the Nissans with him. He points to the one he wants and says, hey, do you think he could get me some keys? I said, absolutely, man. So I go inside. I say to the manager, I say, hey, this guy wants to check out this car. He's still having the meeting. He says, here, there's the keys to it. We'll have someone out there in a minute just to help you. I go back out there, open the car for it. The guy just says, hey, jump in. He grabs the keys. We go down the road. I'm talking to the guy. We're laughing, having a good time. He reminds me of my grandpa. And I'm telling the guy, I'm like, oh my gosh, man, you remind me of my grandpa. You know what I'm saying? And we start kicking it, having a good time, building rapport. I don't even know I'm building rapport, <laughs> but I'm building rapport with the guy. And guess what? When we get back, the second we pull up, this other salesman comes out and he says, hey, sir, how you doing? Listen, he's brand new. He's only been here for about an hour. So I'm going to kind of take over at this point and help out. Andy, I appreciate it. And the guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm only here and I want to deal with him. If anybody else, you know, comes into the deal, I'm leaving. And I'm like, damn, I'm going to get fired the first day. And guess what happens? I said, okay. He guy goes, hey, listen, I bought a lot of cars in my life. He's like, you know what? It's your first day. He's like, I really like you. I don't normally like my salespeople. But uh, I'd like to go see what the numbers look like on the car. I'm like, man, this is easy. All right. So I go inside. We sit down with the guy and the manager says, hey, come here, Andy, sales tower. I walk in there. He says, hey, I'm going to have the other salesman go in on your deal now because we're going to do what's called a write-up sheet. Well, guess what? The other salesman walks in there again. And all of a sudden we see that customer walking back out. And he says, listen, and he walks into the manager's office. And he says, if someone else comes in and they're going to help me other than that young man right there who's been helping me, I'm leaving. And I was like, damn, I'm going to get fired today. And guess what happened? It was my very first day. And the manager said, no problem. He said, Andy, this guy likes you a lot. Do me a favor. Go in there and fill this worksheet out. When you're done, bring it back to me. Also, get a credit app. I walk, I walk in there. Guy fills out the credit app. Guy fills out the worksheet with me. I walk back into my manager's office. Don't know what's going on. Look, I don't know anything about cars. I never even had a car, okay? As I, go, as I walk back in there, I remember my manager pulling his credit saying, man, this guy's gold. I'm like, gold, gold's good. That's good. I mean, I think gold would be a good thing. So guess what? He says, Andy, here's the deal. He wrote down two options, option A, option B. He said, go inside, ask him what he wants to do, option A or option B. And guess what? I walked inside to that office, sat down, and I said, sir, got great news, option A or option B. Which one are you going to do? Sign here. And my boss said, you know, we'll get you a new car cleaned up for the delivery. That's what I said to the guy. We'll get you a new car cleaned up for delivery. And the guy goes, what the hell's the interest rate? And I, at that time, I didn't even know what interest rate was. I really didn't. I'm 18 years old. I don't know what an interest. Remember, I was raised very poor. Okay. Now you may say, Andy, that's dumb. Also, I made bad grades. Okay. I had street smarts. I was a grinder, but I damn sure didn't know what an interest rate was. That had something to do with money. So we didn't have that and that wasn't even an option. So guess what? I said, interstate. I said, oh, you're talking about the interstate. And the guy looked at me like, are you playing with me? And I wasn't playing with him. But I didn't know what to say, and I was trying not to feel like an idiot. And some of you guys are trying to judge me right now, and you're thinking, what the hell, Andy? And guess what? The guy goes, you know what? I'll do option B. Don't worry about it, Andy. And he signs the paper. I bring it back into my manager. My manager looks over at me, and he goes, are you serious? I said, yeah. He goes, get this guy in finance right now. Guess what happened? We took him to finance. I go, he goes, you go get this car cleaned up right now. Make it brand new. Go pull it around. Boom. Go grab the car, pull it around. Guy goes to finance. Guy comes outside. Manager comes out, shows the guy how all the stuff works, shakes his hand. And when the guy drives off, he says, Andy, follow me in my office right now. 
I go into his office and literally he says, do you know how much money you just made? And I said to him, I said, I remember like it was yesterday and I know it sounds like a stupid story. I'm telling you guys, but I want you to understand this. This is where I realized that the selling cars is my way out. And this was just the beginning. And this is what started the fire, which is how I, why I wanted to start here. He says, you just made $1,800. And I remember thinking if, if you would have told me that I made enough money to buy lunch, I would have been fired up. But you just told me that I turned into an adult in one minute in the car business. And guess what happened? He said, also on top of that, you're going to get that $1,800 check tomorrow, okay? Because it's the last day of the month. So we're going to cut checks tomorrow and this deal is going to be booked immediately. He said, you also won the high gross of the week, which this week pays 500 cash. So we're going to give you that in the morning. I made $2,300 in one day from having zero money. And I'm going to tell you that day, I remember walking outside and I just looked up in the sky and I thought, you know what? The old Andy just died. He did. He just died. And from that minute forward, I started recreating myself. That was my very first day. Let me tell you what happened the next day. And this is what we call the lawn chair story. If you've ever been with me in a master closer seminar, I might've shared this with you before. This was how, when I decided that selling cars is my way out, how I was going to make in a relentless approach and attack to crush everybody. And what I did is that, you know, obviously anybody that's poor, that's broke, they had these plastic lawn chairs in their drive in their garage. I don't know if anybody's ever seen one. They're like two different colors and they're like checkered and they're plastic, right? Well, I had like 10 of them in my garage and I literally brought one to work the next day. And I said, no one is talking to a customer unless I get them. And guess what? At 8 a.m., I opened the gate, let my manager drive in, and I got my lawn chair out of his car. I remember walking out in the morning when he picked me up for work. He goes, what the hell is there a lawn chair doing in your hand? I said, don't worry about it. We're going to sell more cars. And it, like literally, I took ownership of being the top guy in the store, even though I was the worst salesman in the world. And I took that lawn chair and I put it in the middle gate. And everybody that pulled through, I said, hey, sales or service, how you doing? My name's Andy. How can I help you? Every single person, they said service. I said, great, pull up right there. Their service, here's my business card. If you need anything, let me know. If they said sales, guess what? I said, great, hey, I'm the one who's going to serve you at the highest level. Pull up right there. Thank you so much. I'll see you in just a second. I put the lawn chair in the middle of the gate. Every time I got a customer, guess what would happen? The other salesman would go break my lawn chair in half <laughs> and throw in the trash can. So guess what? I went through 10 lawn chairs in 10 days. And then literally, I just, I put them on like stock order. I went and bought every lawn chair I could. And that was my lawn chair story. They hated me from it because of that lawn chair. And I want to tell you guys something, all right? I started to realize that that first lay down deal I had that made me that $1,800 or 23, that deal wasn't every deal. And as much as I thought that I could make a ton of money, I started to realize that if I wasn't great at closing negotiations, overcoming objections, understanding how to become a great salesperson and be elite, that I really wasn't going to make as much money as I thought I wanted to make. And I learned that time in the dealership didn't really equal more money made. I needed to level up and get some skill. So I found this seminar and it was Tom Hopkins. And long story short, it was a $1,300 seminar. Okay. And I didn't have that kind of money. I mean, I, I made a little money and then obviously, you know, that money goes away. I bought a car because I needed to ride to work. And um, I go to this Tom Hopkins seminar and I make a deal with my dad. I said, dad, if you'll put this on your credit card and you'll let me go to the seminar, I guarantee I'll pay it back to you within the first month. And my dad said, yeah, not a chance. That's not happening. We're not putting $1,300 on anything. My house payment in $1,300. And guess what? I talked to him for three days and begged him. And I swore in my life that literally I would pay him back that month before the bill was due. Well, guess what? I go to that seminar. It's a three-day event. I come back. I'm on fire. And I make $10,000 my very first month back. That's whenever the light went off in my head. And I saw like, look, if you want to crush everybody, if you want to kill it, skill is the way to go. Yeah. Work ethic obviously is necessary. Look, hard work beats skill when skill don't show up, but, but work ethic matched with learned skill, deadly skill is the unfair advantage to crush the competition. And I was like, I want to become the most skilled assassin in the world. And I started to realize, and I was watching a lot of Jim Rohn, he would say, it's not about who you are, it's about who you're becoming. And I started visualizing that this, this new guy, this new me was someone that I had never met and that no one else in my family or anybody that knew me had ever seen. I had to create something that I couldn't see, but I could taste it and I knew it was there. 
And I was going to be relentless and keep attacking until that happened. So I went and looked for my next seminar and I knew that if I could go from five to 10, right? I was making five grand a month, I mean, three to five, and I could go to 10, that I guarantee if I got with somebody that could teach me to close and handle objections and stuff like that, that I could go to 20. And I started thinking way bigger. And what I realized is I started thinking bigger, I started taking more action. Okay. And by the way, the thinking big without the action doesn't work. I was ready to apply action with it. Well, Grant Cardone, right? This is back in like 1999, 2000. Um, he has this little seminar and it says, Hey, if you want to learn how to close deals, guess what? It costs 500 or a thousand bucks or something. And he was going to be doing it in a big conference room. Long story short, 23 years ago, 22 years ago, I go to this and look, the fact that I knew nothing, and Tom Hopkins taught us how to sell great, but Grant Cardone taught us these closes that would work 20 years ago. And guess what? I went in and I learned these closes. I went back to work. I made $20,000 my next month. Okay, I'm starting to catch on now. Every time I spent money on myself, every time I invested in myself on training, I made more money. Now, listen, I was an action taker. Look, I had a fear of loss that I was going to go back to that sewer life again that I had. So I literally worked relentlessly, but this new score, this new skill was my unfair advantage. That's how I crushed everybody. So guess what? I go back to the dealership and I'm going to tell you guys when I say this, when you don't know how to close a deal, back then managers didn't help you. They split your deal with another salesperson. That was the way it worked. So it was either split all your deals or learn to close. You know what I'm saying? It was the fight or flight and I'm fighting. Well, also back then, and I'll just say this as I was kind of thinking about the lawn chair story and as we moved into how seminars change, you know, you start seeing this new income earning potential opportunity, the better that you get. Well, this is when lightning really struck me right in the heart. I'm sitting there with my GM one day I'm making 15 to 20 grand a month back and forth. I'm probably, I don't know, 20, 21 years old now. Hadn't gotten to the big money yet. Okay. And my GM, I, I, I banked at a little credit union down the street. I was going to cash my check. My GM says, Hey, you know, I knew he banked there at that same bank. He says, Hey, Andy, do me a favor. He says, You, you, you bank at the little credit union, right? I said, Yeah. He said, Do me a favor. When you go through the drive through, would you please deposit my check? I said, Absolutely, man. No problem. I was dying to see his check. I remember on the way there, I was like, I bet he makes 25 grand. I bet he makes 20 grand consistently. Something, ha you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Guys, listen, I'm going through the drive through I deposit my check. I go to pull his out. And you know what I see? I see a $48,000 take-home check. Listen, take-home, 48000 I don't know what kind of check it was, if it was a wash or whatever, but I've never seen anybody take home $50,000 in my life. And by the way, that right there was the strike in the heart and the lightning that for the first time in my life, I realized the type of money, the reality of the earning potential that this business had. And at that time, I looked at my GM and I remember, I, I, I can still envision his face to this day. Okay. I said, is that guy like God? Is he really that good? Or has the guy just gotten so much skill over the years that I could take that guy out if I just learned everything that he knew and I acquired all of the skill? And matter of fact, was he so good that I couldn't be better? And guess what? That's when I went on full mission attack. That's whenever Andy Elliott really came alive. The very next month, there was a Rolex that was going to be given out to the top salesman in the store. Look, I sold 30 cars a month, okay? But there was a new car guy down in the store that sold 55 cars a month on average. Listen, that was double me. That was double my sales, okay? Now, listen, he was a house mouse. He got all the house deals, okay? I gross good. He sold a lot of units. The, the owner of the store, there were 60-something salespeople said, hey, top salesman in my entire company, right? gets a yacht master rolex okay white face 44 millimeter it's a thirteen thousand dollar watch by the way i got it sitting in my safe right now guess what i never wore it but i won it and i want to tell you how i did okay 
I decided that if I could get that watch, it wasn't the Rolex watch I wanted, but if I could get that watch, that would stand the line and draw the line in the sand that anything I ever wanted for the rest of my life I could get. But it required me to double my sales. And guess what? I went to work that next month and I peeled myself from being a 25 to 30 car hand to being a 62 to 63 car hand and beating him by three deals. I'm going to tell you this. That guy, he finished at 58. I finished at like 62, 63 or something like that. Maybe he finished 600. I remember there was like a four car difference between us. He had me beat going into that Friday. It was ended on a Saturday. He had me beat by seven cars. I had to go into like crazy war zone to end up winning. But my point is, is it just proves that sometimes you don't come out the gate winning and people think that winning looks like, like a, a massive month of like every day destroying it. It doesn't. Sometimes I think sometimes during that month that you have that record month, there could be a couple days that you blank and don't sell a car. But most people on those days fall apart because they lose track of the vision of what they want. Well, long story short, I ran that month as hard as possible, sold my 62, sold my 63, I won that Yachtmaster Rolex watch, walked into the uh, to the store, BC Clark's, pick it out. And I remember that guy, he's like, man, $13,000 watch, you want it, how's that feel? And I was like, man, you have no idea what this watch stands for. I don't care about the 13 grand. This watch just proved that whatever I want to do, if I apply enough action and if I believe and I think about it often and I think about it for a long time, my thoughts start to change inside my head. And I believe that I can hit that and I can do it and I see myself hitting it. And all I envisioned was myself winning that Rolex every minute of every day. And guess what? It carried me through. So from that point, that was the beginning of Andy Elliott starting to destroy it. After that, I averaged 50 to 60 cars a month. I never went back to the old me and I buried Andy again on that day. From that month forward, guess what? I started earning thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month. Like I said, by the time I was 25, I made my first 500000 Guess what? By the time I was 27, I hit my $700,000 check. Here's the kicker. I met my wife. And that was whenever I had to straighten up big time. Obviously, you're not single anymore. You're in the car business running around. You know what I'm saying? I met her and me and her, she was in the car business too. So me and her were grinders together. We decided that, you know what? We wanted to team sell, which men and women don't do in the car business, not very often. But we wanted to team sell. And I wanted, my wife got me hooked on riding a Harley. She's riding a Harley to work. I'm riding one. We go into work. We work four days a week. And we were both so deadly at selling that literally we were making $50,000 a month working four days a week. And my wife, she's a wicked closer. But the cool thing is, is that I start to realize that, you know what? How much money in the car business is there really? Everybody has to have a car. Everybody wants a car. And guess what? Everybody's here to buy. They came to buy and they will buy as long as you do your job. So can you do your job in a competition, in an era where everyone's asleep at the wheel while you're training, staying sharp, being a one percenter and crushing everybody? And I was like, dang, man, baby, I literally think that like there's so much more potential. We think we hit the 700 and won the lottery. I think there's so much more potential. And I got these guys next to me making 80 grand that don't understand how to make more. Guess what it is? It's called skill acquisition. Guys, I will repeat it a million times. If you can acquire the skill of being an elite, I mean, one to 10, you got to be an 11. Mindset, attitude, motivation, drive, dude, skill, closing, negotiations, overcoming objections, word tracks, every, your tonality, dude, your body language, you know what I'm saying? Dude, conviction, enthusiasm. All of the things, we teach all that in this 21st century training program. All the things that I knew back then that we needed, we do it now. And with that being said, we went ahead and me and my wife decided because we wanted to start a family, we wanted to move out of Oklahoma and go down to Lake Texoma. And this is where I'll tell you again, I buried Andy. Okay. And when I keep saying I buried it, I literally keep getting to new places where I thought, you know what? There's another place to go. There's a, the rabbit hole is deeper. I mean, I really think there's a new place that we can crush this. And guess what we did? We went to a store that was selling 70 cars a month. 
in a town where the average income was 1500 Think about this. Who's going to go sell cars in that town? Right now, a lot of people, they're saying, hey, I want to go to the bigger store. I want to sell more cars. Listen, what I wanted to do, again, was to prove to myself that I could sell more cars than anybody. I was an incredible salesperson. My wife, I wanted her to start having our son. We wanted to start having some kids. And we went to freaking uh, go take on this small store selling cars. The owner said the top guy here sells 13 to 15 a month. He makes 5,000 a month. And the store selling 70 cars total. Our, my very first month, I sold 40 cars there. Now, that didn't mean I sold 40 out of the 70 that were being sold. I started generating my own traffic, which is what we teach, which is marketing. And we teach everything from closing negotiation, but we also teach marketing. Month two, I sold 50. Month three, I sold 60. Month four, I sold 70. <clears throat> I averaged 70 cars a month for two years straight in a small town that you would stop to use the bathroom on the way to Dallas. And guess what? And I mean this when I say this, I, we took the store to selling 210 cars a month on average, just because when the tide rises, all ships rise. Everybody that was selling eight to 10, when they saw me selling 70, they turned into 20 car hands because when you get bigger, better, faster, stronger, so does your competition. It was a beautiful thing in the store. I was watching these other salespeople because they would watch what I would do with the customer. They were making more money now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, man. So I'm selling 70 cars a month. These guys that were selling eight are selling 20, 25 now. You know what? I'm like, dude, I told my wife, I said, I feel more, I, I get more out of not me selling the 70, but taking the 10 car guy to 25. And I wasn't even their trainer. I would just teach them little things along the way. And that's when we decided to open our training program. For the very first time, I said, you know what, babe, I don't want to do anything for me anymore. I want to do it for other people. And we really took the servant heart and we wanted to build the biggest, baddest, strongest training company in the world. And this is back in 2011. Now, at this point, I go in, I take on four, five, six, seven stores on training. I'd walk into the owners and I'd say, hey, you know what, are you selling on the bottom, the middle or the top? And the owners would say, ah, well, you know, we're doing pretty well. I'd be like, oh, okay, cool, man. Hey, listen, if I'd like five minutes of your time, could you please do me a favor? Could you please page your top salespeople into the, into, into the room, top two or top three? What I'd like to do is hit them with a couple objections. If they can't overcome them, okay, I'll show you how I would do it. And then if you like that, maybe I could teach your whole staff. What do you think? And they'd be like, okay, cool. I'll call on my top guys. And I, I think the thing I thought I was just screwing with them. But I would call in their top guys and I'd break them right in front of the owner. And then guess what? Then I would tell them how I would do it. Their, their jaw would drop. They'd be like, oh my God, can you teach that to my guys? I said, absolutely. And then guess what? I'd have an account. And that's how I did it. I spent my time traveling around. We were doing great, but guess what? Now I have my second daughter on the way. And my wife, she wanted to travel with me when I would go. And I would say, hey, you know, and plus we had my son. It just got to where it was a little uncomfortable. Well, there was this owner that kept saying, begging me every time I was in a store training. He said, Andy, since you've been training in my company, we've raised our per copy on the front end, $1,800. 1800 Andy. He said, that's not where we're averaging. We've raised it 1800 since you've been here. He says, I want you to take my store over. Will you please take it over? At this point, I've been a manager. I've sold cars. We crushed it, killed it. I've broken every record. I've already made 716 as a salesperson. Okay. I'm not sitting on no mountain. You know what? When I always say this, you go to sleep on a win, you'll wake up with a loss. When you climb a mountain, you know what? You come down off that mountain, you go climb a bigger mountain. I ain't going to be no one timer in my life. Well, my wife is, is tired of traveling. And I thought, you know what? This guy keeps coming at me so much like saying, Andy, just tell me what it takes. Tell me what it takes. Tell me what it takes. He has a store that's selling 150 cars a month. I knew that if I ever went all in, the tribe, the train, like the training, the team that I had and all these stores that I was building, if those guys worked for me, we would destroy it. And, but it would, you know how I am. I go all in. So once I went all in, I was afraid that I wouldn't come home again because once I commit to something, it's just crazy. So guess what? This, I sit down with this owner and he says, write it down. And I remember take a pen and a piece of paper and I wrote out everything that I wanted, everything. And I, and I, and I slid it over to him. Now, listen, I've showed this guy massive results. I've already moved the needle in his store as a trainer. Okay. And as I showed it to him, he said, Hey, I'll do it. Can you start tomorrow? And literally I remember calling my wife and she said, Hey, 
I want you to start tomorrow. And I said, no ways. I said, I'm going to go back into the dealers, the people that have given me the opportunity to train them. And guess what? I'll start in a month from now. And guess what? I did it the right way. I didn't do what the car business always wanted me to do. You know what I mean? And that, that owner said, fine, I'll see you in a month. I went back through, I went and I, and all my accounts that I had, I told them that I was going back into the business and I appreciate them and I love them. And guess what? I started my job as a GM. The record in that store was 320 cars, okay? Within a 40 year time frame that it had been open, there was a plaque on the wall that said 320, had a big picture of all the managers, GMs, and everybody. I told my wife, I'm going to snap that plaque in half in three months. The store was selling 150 at the time. Literally within three months, we were selling 360 cars. I slammed it on the ground. We tore it in half. We snapped it in half with my entire sales team. Here's the beautiful thing. The owner, when I took over the store, he told me, he said, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you this. All these salespeople, they suck. All of them suck. I recommend you calling all your stores that you train and bring in and recruit other salespeople because these guys are the worst. Guess what? I didn't replace one guy. I just went in and trained them all. We started implementing training three times a week for an hour and I did it all on my own. And guess what? After that 90 days, we beat the all-time world record that the store had ever had. Long story short, over the five-year period that I was there, okay, we averaged 450 cars a month, averaged, and our record was 606 booked after rollbacks. Look, we took a store from netting a million a year to netting 12 million a year. That's insane. And I'm going to tell you this. I was nobody at 18. At 25, 27, we're breaking all the records selling cars. Team sold with my wife. And guess what? The entire time, went to a 70 car store, sold 70 a month in a 70 car store. The entire time, I told myself how to think. I told myself what was going to happen. I didn't ever let anybody tell me what was going to happen. And if you guys have been on my training program, you know what I say. We say what David Goggins says all the time. He says, if, if you care what other people think, you'll become the world's biggest punk. Okay. And he says other words, but the idea of it is could become in the world's biggest, you know, punk that right there. It really means that other people don't have good things planned for you. Most times they want you to think small. They want to tell you what the scenario is. They want to paint the picture. Look, I went to an owner brought me into a store and he says to me, he says, Hey, listen, man, my guys are closing at 20%. He goes, I'd like to get them to 30. I said, why can't we get them to 60? And he said, well, that's never happened, Andy. He said the national standard and all that. I said, dude, first of all, don't give me national standard stuff. Okay. I like stats. I like you know statistics. I like facts, but I want to ask you this. If you're going to think small, what are you going to do? You're going to put a glass ceiling on your team. Why don't we crash the glass ceiling and let's shatter that and let's set the new standard and raise the target in the company for 60% closing. Guess what? After 60 days, the store's closing at 58%. You know, the funny thing about it is if I would have had agreed with him that 30% would have been okay, we would have set the standard in the store for, for 30%. And guess what? We would have costed him a lot of money. The idea of it is, is that look, nobody really knows what they're capable of until they go all in. Does anybody remember that guy? Do you guys ever remember that guy that never went all in? Absolutely not. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, neither do we. Nobody and, does. And Andy, really tying back into what you said about um, if you listen to what other people think about you, you'll become the world's biggest punk. A lot of salespeople, they really care about what the other salespeople think about them. And that goes back to that lawn chair story where you on the second day picked up the lawn chair, went outside to the gate, and then fought salesmen every single night. People are over here thinking that they need to be buddy buddies with the guy next to them when that's not the case at all. Yeah. So, and what I think is, look, and by the way, I don't like friction. I don't like friction between salespeople. Look, I like people to like me. Who doesn't want to be, you know, who doesn't want to be accepted, right, in the world? Right. But the idea of it is, is that, look, if you're wanting to crush your competition, and then me crush them. And by the way, people in your store, I love culture. I do. I love it. I wish that every single salesperson got along, but it's kind of like a baseball game, okay? And we were talking about this earlier. If you go on a baseball field, right, that's your baseball team and you want to win with your team. You right. really do. But the deal is, is each batter has his own batting average. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Babe Ruth, right? He had a bunch of other people on his team. Do you remember him? No, because they had a shitty batting average. <laughs> Nobody remembers him. The deal is they were all on the same team. So they won the Yankees together, but only anybody remembers Babe Ruth. You see, so my deal is, is that I'm like, hey, you want to be the Babe Ruth of your store? You know what I'm saying? Guess what? You can't be hanging around with the people on the roster that aren't going to be remembered. Okay? If you're around nine broke people, you'll become the 10th. 
All right. So here's our goal is that we want to create the world's most elite salespeople, which is why we called the podcast the one percenter Andy Elliott podcast. And the idea of it is every time we have a podcast, we're going to cover some incredible stuff. This is for people to understand and get to know like where our training company comes from, what we've been through, what we did, and that look, everything is possible as long as you take ownership and believe it. And the deal is, is that look, I would say, show me your trainer, we'll show you your future. And now, right now that we're training, you know, 115,000 salespeople across the country at the time this was made in 2020 of December going into Christmas. You know, I, I can tell you right now, we, we train guys that were making a hundred thousand dollars last year, and they're gonna they're, they're gonna make three fifty this year. We're training guys that were making two fifty that their dealership thought that they were the baddest thing in the world, and we've taken those guys, and we've got some of them that are gonna hit five or six hundred thousand dollars a year this year. And no, they're not in management, and they're no, they're not GMs. Okay, our goal is to create everybody to be either one the most incredible GM in the world and lead their entire sales team. Okay, and we wouldn't be the trainer to be a part of that. Or two, become the top salesperson in the country, level up and get better every single day. And that's it. And we want to be a part of that. You see, so the idea of it is, is that, look, we just want you to be the best and we believe in everybody. And our biggest fault in our training company is that we see more than most people see in themselves. And I'm going to say this, I, you could call it a fault, but that's a good flaw. Okay, so why we push people so hard is probably why the training's work works because obviously it's training that works. Any objection, it's real simple. Guy says no, you get them to say yes. They're going to buy the car. We teach everybody every objection in the dealership how to overcome it, how to do it really fast, do it with you know conviction, confidence, and, and overcome it. Dude, this is every salesman's nice nightmare. How to take a pencil and you know present it where you know you're not ever afraid of the customer saying no. You're ready for them to say no. And when they do, guess what? You say, I understand. Let me show you how affordable your new car is. And every time you go in and close them, price, trade, payment, it doesn't matter. Guy says he wants to get back with you, done. We'll close that guy up in two seconds. We want you to be the best closer in your company because we know that closing is where the money's made. Now, look, being a great salesperson is everything. I mean, if you can't sell, you're not going to close anything. The sale can't be closed until it's open, right? So selling is important, but so is closing. And then also we teach the marketing that gives these sales guys the unfair advantage, how they can generate 25, 50, 75 leads a day straight to their cell phone and become their own business inside of the business. Look, this is probably one of the most beautiful things. When I got out of being a GM, I knew that training salespeople, I should have never left my trainer job. I should never left. And our business has been open for 10 years now. But when I was a GM, I just knew it. I was like, gosh, man, it, it's not about the money anymore. I want to go back to the people. And I, I will tell you right now, it's kind of as we're towards the end of this podcast, if you're somebody that's listening right now, and whether you're a sales manager, whether you're a finance manager, whether you're a general manager, or whether you're a salesperson in your dealership, a salesperson who's doing great, a salesperson who's number one in their store, or a salesperson who's at the very bottom, or somebody looking to get into sales, okay? I mean, I just covered everything. Here's what I'll tell you. Call me the janitor, show me the money. What we're teaching salespeople to do is turn decades into days. Yep. Literally acquire the skill to go crush their competition. Look, right now, we're in the era right now of the worst salesperson in the history of time. Do you know how easy it is to become great right now? But you have to be disciplined. You have to be willing to be executing. You, you can't be the information man listening to this whole podcast, gathering everything, and then saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, okay, cool. I think I got enough. Let me go back to work. No, no, no. That doesn't work. Watch how your income has scaled by working hard in the dealership. A lot of people have gotten to, you know, 60 grand, 100 grand, 150, and they've never passed it. And here's what I want to ask you. If you want to double your income, can you get twice as many hours in, in the month? Do you get twice as many days? No, you get the same amount of days and the same amount of hours. Most of you can't work any more hours. You're already working all you can. And guess what? If you are working that many hours and you have a family, your family is learning to live without you. Okay? So what you have to do is skill up and that way you can scale up so you can get the life you love, which is why we always talk about we want salespeople to get the life that they deserve. We want them to create their best life. And then guess what? Also get paid what they're worth, right? Yep. You know, you don't get in life what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. I mean, yeah, you don't get life what you deserve, you, you, you know, you get what you negotiate. If you're showing up in the morning, putting the coffee on, you're great to everybody at work, you're nice and loving, and then you're selling 15 cars a month. I'm going to tell you this, at the end of your life, you're going to live with regrets, okay? But if you go all in and you, and like I said, I'm not telling you not to love on people, okay? But you go all in and you put forth all this killer training program that we have and you go all in, dude, it, it it's the fastest wins we've ever seen. 
from people going, I mean, how many times, Gian, have we seen people going from selling five cars a month to literally going to selling 20 to 25 cars a month in a matter of 30 days? It's insane. And true, I was, I was one of those people. Your, yeah, you were. Uh, your story about how you went to the Tom Hopkins seminar and how you went to the Grant Cardone seminar, it's, it's literally a replica of my, my exact path with you. I mean, I was selling, you know, five, seven cars a month, not making any gross, barely covering my draw, came to a master closer seminar next month. 12 grand yeah Long story short came to six more in between and then did 21 grand yeah and it just oh. kept scaling and the exactly. deal is is the guy you've created i don't even know who the the first person that came in here today that guy's dead okay <laughs> and you've killed that guy a million times over so is ryan you know what i'm saying you know I, I mean everybody has this amazing story i mean ryan you know do you remember the first time you sent me a video you were in the car and i remember i said god man this guy's taking notes ryan's a note taker oh yeah i mean how many youtube videos did you watch how many notes did you take yeah so so real simply i i would take notes of every single youtube video i spent an hour and a day in the car you know while everybody else is you know sitting around at the coffee pot right i would spend an hour and a day disciplined and i think that's the thing that you know most people you know discredit right is the discipline the consistency you know that you need to have to really take your skill set because it's not an overnight success story by any means just as andy just said i mean you know not only did you know he just become this phenomenal closer but it took you you know countless hours thousands of hours you know what I yep. mean? And, you know, time and experience, like you said, doesn't equal, you know, big paychecks in the car business. So you're not just put in 10,000 hours into selling cars. You put 10,000 hours into training to be an expert at your job. And, yeah. And Ryan, I mean, going back when you were taking notes, you were having to, having to go through all the videos to see what applied to your specific situation. Now, the beauty of it is, is that Andy's released some courses that teach you exactly from A to Z yep. how to do what, what Ryan spent hours trying to find the videos. Right. It's all there laid out for you. Yeah, it's like, here's the test. Here's the answers to the test. And the cool deal is, is like I said, anybody listening to this right now, our number one goal in life, bottom line is this. We have the world's number one sales training program, hands down. There is nobody in the automotive space that can compete with us. I will say that. And by the way, the haters can come out, but I will say that. Grant Cardone stuff, I love Grant. He's But he's 20 years, he's 15 years outdated. Yep. Okay, he's outdated. Okay, he's 62 years old. He's into real estate. He's, he didn't He didn't ever clone himself and build something to be badass underneath him. You know what? You know, Tom, Tom Hopkins, you know, I mean, I, I think he's alive anymore. But I'm just saying, I love that guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, Joe Verde, old. You know what I'm saying? No one underneath him. I mean... Ziggler died. I mean, we, we don't have anybody in our space. There's no competition. Yeah, but we don't have anybody in our space to take us to the next level. And that's why as a GM, I kept telling my wife, I said, listen, if I could take a salesperson and I could show them how to go make $250,000 in a year, it would change their entire life. And not only could I be a part of something amazing, but guess what? The business that I'm passionately in love with at 23 years, on fire for you. If anybody hasn't seen Andy Elliott YouTube videos, go watch them. You see the fire I preach with. I can't yell in this podcast deal because I'll break your eardrums. But the idea of it, I'm so passionate about it that guess what? That's what I want to do is change the lives. So now we're looking up. I look at the scoreboard. I look at your scoreboard. And we have learned how to take you from no matter what level you're at. Guy calls me and says, Andy, I'm making $300,000 a year. What can I learn from you? We train live with that person. We train with them on a specific course. Guess what happens? That guy goes to making 400 grand. His owner calls and says every time they say, hey, what the hell did you do to this guy? How'd you take him there? Well, number one, you wanted it. But number two, we gave you the skill set to get there. That's the amazing thing. And I'm going to tell you, when I say this to you, there is a relentless, unbelievable just sales team that's being built across the world right now with our training program and it is insane and i'm so proud of everybody and as i said you know we've made so many um youtube videos we have almost 500 youtube videos out you know what i'm saying like i said we're training 115,000 people this time we thought it was time for a podcast and going into to podcast one i figured the very best thing that we could do on podcast one is number one introduce myself make sure that everybody understands that you know people try to put titles on people that are doing extraordinary things if you're doing something great you know your dad must have been a dealer you know you must have got an easy break you know you must have been in a dealership selling 1500 cars a month no, man, none of that had happened. But guess what? As we go through and we push through together, we will dominate everybody together. Not compete, 
we will dominate. Guys, I, I I love everybody. I think that obviously being here with us, you know, and listening to this podcast, if you're still on at this point, you're definitely the one percenter. Absolutely. Yeah. And I always say, you know, there's a difference of being committed and being interested. Okay. Um, interested is like, hey, I'm interested in making more money. I'm interested in having a better life. Committed means I'll do whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, people always say, hey, Andy, you know, how, how'd you make $700,000 a year selling cars? I say, hey, do you really want to know? Or are you just asking? Because if you really want to know, the training program will take you there. And also at the very end, obviously any of you guys are here with us, we got the, uh, some killer 1% merch, right? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable, right? Like, like unbelievable. I love it. Um, Andy Elliott shop. It's real simple. Andy Elliott shop, two L's, two T's. You go to Andy Elliott shop. You guys got the most killer one percent apparel hats, beanies, backpacks we got face masks we got all kinds of cool stuff man these guys keep coming up with the most sick logos and it's unreal but anyways go grab it sport your merch and by the way if you love the training if you love you know what we do if you love the podcast do me a favor share this with somebody that needs to hear it maybe somebody that's not doing great right now maybe somebody that's killing it maybe somebody that you know you're you're rocking out on the training and you're like hey you know what man I would like for you to start following this guy and listening to him. And by the way, when I say the word follow, leaders create leaders, not followers. So my goal is if you're training with me, I'm taking you to the damn top. No ifs, ands, or buts. So anyways, I love everybody. Ryan, I appreciate you. Gian, I appreciate you guys. Everybody have an amazing Christmas, obviously, at this time. I know you might be listening to this five years from now, but we're going into 2021. Special things going on. And uh, you guys got anything else you want to say before we're done? Well, first and foremost, if you haven't joined the One Percenters Club, Ooh, ooh, how do they do that, G? Yeah, you can search up Andy Elliott One Percenters Club on Facebook. It'll pop up. But also, um, we'll have we'll have a link somewhere to join. We'll have a link somewhere. I love it. And one percenters is four letters. It's one and percent percent sign and then the ER. ER, Yeah, one percent ER. So Andy Elliott, one percenter club. Guys, we love you. We can't wait to see you on the flip side. Have a great day. See you guys soon.